Josh Christopher, also known as Jacob, is a very sporadic prospect. Coming out of ASU, he was touted for his two-way potential and NBA-ready body, and he flashed both in his rookie year for the Rockets. At 6'5", 215 pounds, with a plus three or plus four wingspan, Christopher has the size to play either guard spot and the strength to play some small ball three. He had the definition of an up and down year, losing playing time to the likes of DJ Augustine and Garrison Matthews, but also had some truly incredible flashes and stretches of play, specifically on the offensive side of the ball. But we're not here to talk about Josh's offense. My friend Noah Terranova already covered that in his great video. Today, we're going to be talking about Gup's defense. The big thing we're going to get into here is that Josh relishes the opportunity to create chaos. Every action and reaction of his is designed to create it or maintain it, and you can see it in the way he defends primarily with his hands and in recovery on the perimeter. This allows him to create pick sixes and easy transition opportunities at an impressive rate, as he led the Rockets and was 42nd in the NBA in steals per 36 among all players with at least 300 logged minutes this last season. This is going to become a recurring theme throughout the video, but for all the great flashes of physical defense and the great contests and the incredible steals, there's just as many, if not more flashes, of Gup getting absolutely dusted. Far too often, Josh is sitting on his heels and poking at the ball, often leaving him behind the play, half-heartedly trailing his man. Simple moves would shift him out of his shoes and he would sell out on the drive far too often, giving up wide open jumpers to some of the league's premier superstars. On the bright side, his peel-offs got slightly better as the year went on, but if he's going to continue to play this style of point-of-attack defense, his rotations are going to have to be perfect. Gup loves to be physical on defense, and while it may be an effective strategy against some of the weaker ball handlers in the league, more often than not, it gets him into sticky situations and he ends up getting whistled for a completely unnecessary foul. I would rather see Gup be overly aggressive like this though, as I think it's easier to bring guys like him in rather than the other way around. Another area where Gup's defense is very hit or miss is his closeouts. He gravitates towards the ball and is constantly looking to make a play on it. Because of how close he gets to ball handlers, he can sometimes have a tough time recovering out the shooters. As the year went on, Christopher became more anticipatory and less reactive and if he continues to grow and become more proactive, he has the physical tools and the feel to become one of the league's premier wing defenders. We're going to get a little bit philosophical here, but to me one of the best ways to project defensive feel in a prospect is to note their instincts when the play breaks down or in transition. In the modern NBA, this is bound to happen many, many times every single game, and being able to either recover or still play decent defense despite the breakdown is a very important skill. Gup's biggest strength defensively as a rookie was reacting to what the offensive player was doing, and even if it was a little bit slow, making the right read and the right rotation for what the defense needed him to do in that moment, and he really showed that in transition and when the play broke down. The big consequence of being such a reactive defender and getting dusted all the time is that Gup is playing recovery defense more than he's playing actual defense on ball. His long arms, quick reaction speed, and exceptional athleticism mean he's still able to be a pest from behind. And later in the year, this switch sort of flipped in his head like, oh, even if I get dusted, if I stay in the play, I can still impact the possession from this compromised position. His incredible defensive hands really aid him here where he's able to poke the ball out from behind, strip dudes, or just execute solid digs while getting mostly ball. He's also able to go up for a nasty chase down block every once in a while, which, even when unsuccessful, often forced the ball handler into a tougher layup than they would have had otherwise. You can see here against Ish Smith, he gets dusted, stays in the play, and forces him into the tougher layup with good verticality. And the same thing here against DeJounte Murray, gets blown by, still goes up, forces him to go for the reverse, which he blows. Some of Christopher's best flashes are as the low man making weak side rim rotations, where he's able to contest at the rim without fouling or just get the block outright. He tends to have a good read of when to jump and when to stay on the ground to rebound, and he does a solid job of staying vertical. His timing for a rookie guard is really what's impressive here, because it's not something he's really been asked to do at other levels, and he just kind of has this innate sense of when to make the rotation. This stood out to me throughout the year, throughout the film, as a definite positive, and it hints at some untapped potential to play the small ball three or even four. When Christopher floats too close to the ball some plays, this is why. He's crowding the ball handler and creating the best possible angle to get a fingertip on the ball and create his beloved chaos. While this is a lot of what created value for him as a rookie, this is also where a lot of his worst moments came. Like there's a lot of aimless floating that ends up turning into a highlight, 
but then there's a lot of clips of him aimlessly floating and losing his man. And, you know, this is how one develops into a really high level NBA defender, is taking these instincts, this feel, and knowing when to apply it. And that's really the big step that is looming for Christopher, is that as much as he wants to do all these things, create all this chaos, he needs to know when to rein it in and when it's a good time to use it and when it's not. So now we're gonna dig into some of these clips specifically and just talk about some mistakes or what goes well, what goes wrong. Here, Gup's in a good position to intercept the pass going to Drew Holiday, but it's just a little bit too reactive and slow on the closeout. This is a pretty solid play, except for the finish. Uh, Gup executes two off-ball switches pretty solidly here onto Trey Lyles and then back onto Corey Joseph. He just tries to overplay this handoff too much, ends up getting stuck behind Corey. He's crafty, gives up the foul. This one I like to call the J. Gup special, sitting entirely on his heels, using his hands to defend, hits Karras with what should have been a foul and doesn't contest gives up the easy floater. Here Gup starts the possession as the low man guarding the corner shooter. The pass goes out, he tries to uh, shoot the passing lane, doesn't end up making it, love the instincts there, wrong result. Here Jacob tries to cheat around the Andre Drummond screen, just ends up getting caught. Isaiah Joe outsmarts him, goes the other way, quick release, bam. Here's another example of Gup playing solid wing defense here, he just gets beat by a crafty ball handler in Faku Compasso, takes a different angle, beats Gup to the shooter. Here Gup gets beat as the point of attack defender, ends up behind the play, but reads the short roll pass from Mason Plumley, ends up making a solid closeout to the corner, just enough to force the miss. Josh Christopher was objectively an awful defender by basically any measurement, but with young players, especially on bad teams, that's almost always going to be the case. The flashes were great, and even when he was awful or getting dusted every time down the floor, he was mostly fighting back into plays and putting effort in, and constantly trying to do something out there. His unique blend of athleticism, feel, and motor make him a really interesting project for the young Rocket squad, especially if they move him more towards the wing position and away from the guard position that he played most of last year. That's about all I have for you today on Josh Christopher's defense. Thank you for watching this entire video. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, did I get anything wrong in your opinion? What position do you see him playing in the future? And check out everything else that we do over at HTX Chop Shop. And I hope you all enjoyed.